Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the BB Biodiversity Museum, uh, a wonderful natural history museum that's opening this fall uh, in full at UBC Vancouver. We're here to celebrate the International Day of Biological Diversity, and of course, the first public preview of the museum's flagship exhibit, a magnificent 25 meter long skeleton of a blue whale. My name is Simon Peacock, I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of Science here at UBC. And on behalf of the University of British Columbia, the Faculty of Science, I would like to thank all of you, the public, members of the UBC community, and friends of the museum for joining us today on this beautiful Saturday morning. Before we usher in the first group of visitors into the exhibit, I'd like you to meet some of the key people who made this museum possible. We'll be hearing from Wayne Madison, our museum director, and from Andrew Trites, who led the team who conceived, collected, cleaned, and assembled the impressive display we're all here to see. And today we'd particularly like to thank alumni, UBC alumni, Ross and Tricia Beatty, the Javed Morafagian Foundation, Mr. Alan Yap, and a host of corporate and kind donors for their generous support of the museum and of the Blue Whale Project. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Wayne Madison, and he's the director of our Beatty Biodiversity Museum. Wayne? Uh, today is a special day, uh, both as International Day for Bio Biological Diversity and as our first public preview of this magnificent blue whale exhibit. The museum is thrilled to have this whale. Uh, of the two million specimens in our research collections, this is definitely the centerpiece. Uh, it's a giant invitation to you, the public, to come visit UBC uh, when we open it to the public this fall. Uh, and so, on behalf of the BG Biodiversity Museum, I'd like to thank those in British Columbia, in PEI, in Ottawa, across Canada, who have helped bring the whale to us. This includes uh, uh, not only the blue whale team itself, uh, about which I'll speak in a moment, but also the museum team that's helped to coordinate it, as well as the faculty of science that so generously supported the effort to get this blue whale. Most especially, I'd like to thank Dr. Andrew Trites, Michael DeRoos, and Michi May. Andrew was the mastermind, the visionary, the coordinator of the whole project. Without him, we would not even have known about the whale, much less uh, ever acquired it. He really made it happen. Mike DeRoos and partner Michi Main brought their many skills to this project, uh, ranging from the scientific, to the engineering, to the artistic, to the culinary. And I mention culinary because probably as you may know, and you certainly can hear more about today, uh, they had to stew the whale for months to get the grease out. Uh, I imagine it's a little bit like trying to cook a turkey uh, that's uh, 85 foot long, and if you've ever tried to cook a turkey and guess exactly when it would be done and get it just right, it isn't easy. Every day, we here at the museum will thank Andrew, Mike, and Michi uh, for their heroic efforts to bring you this inspiring specimen. Without further ado, I'd actually like to open the floor to uh, Andrew to tell us more about the other people that have helped and a little bit of the story of the Blue Whale. Andrew. Well, it's been a long journey. For me, it starts back uh, three years ago when I met with the architects and cooked up this idea of what could be bigger than life that might draw attention here to the museum. And I proposed, why don't we just get a blue whale? And of course, that sounds fairly simple. It turned out to be three years of blood, sweat, and tears, ultimately. And I couldn't be prouder today to see what has been done. The whale behind me is as much a story about the specimen and the uniqueness of blue whales as it is about the people from across Canada that come together to make this a possibility. I spent five months calling everywhere, everyone I knew around the planet that might by chance uh, have a blue whale. And as it turned out, I was in Ottawa in May of 2007, invited to review the, their new Arctic exhibit, and of course I cracked a joke with their curator saying, you don't happen to have an extra blue whale lying around. And uh, from that, I was given the phone number of the head curator, Roger Baird, who we'll be speaking with later on direct from Ottawa. 
And he, in fact, told me this incredible story that they had, in fact, buried a whale in Prince Edward Island in 1987. But unfortunately for them, it was too big and too heavy for the museum in Ottawa. Well, from that, a uh, few more lucky phone calls, um, a little bit of negotiating with the PEA government, and lo and behold, we had the rights to go get it. My first phone call was to Dr. Perry Doust, called Clear the Blue. He was the pathologist who, on his first day on the job in 1987, had to figure out what to do with this large blue whale, why it had died. He's here today with us. We're very glad he came to join us. The second person we were very fortunate to meet was at the kitchen door of her home in Tignish, the conservation officer, Sandra Keogh, who kept the map for 20 years showing where this whale had been buried. She led us right to the spot. She too has come with us here today to see the whale. As you hear later on, uh, today a team of us from BC made two trips uh, to Prince Edward Island to bring back what was in the end uh, 1,000 broken pieces of the foulest smelling, rotting bones uh, anyone has ever tried to recover. These bones had spent one and a half years undergoing a major spa treatment in Victoria before the artists and sculptors joined the scientists to do their magic and heal these broken bones that nature and time had inflicted upon them. From there, the welders and, sculpt and structure engineers worked as, on the major, as these major sections were put together until we had that wonderful day when the blue whale made her last trip to sea courtesy of BC Ferries and the trucking company that brought her here. And literally, it felt like a 4th of July parade coming down here on the boulevard. Two huge trucks, lights flashing. I think that was my happiest moment. Um, and from there, I guess I could say my, as I watched Mike and Michi and Jesse and the whole team put the whale up, I realized at that point, the blue whale took over my life. And it's just been phenomenal watching every day from my window here as people are coming from all over the province to come in and look through and share the same amazement that we, the biologists, have. So, just to wrap up here, on behalf of, B of UBC, I'd like to thank and acknowledge the National Museum of Nature, the people and government of PEI, and the city and people of Victoria. I'd also like to acknowledge the many people who contributed to funding the Blue Whale Project and recognize the important and kind gifts from CN, WestJet, LS Recycle, the UBC Hospital, the Michael Smith Labs, the Vancouver Aquarium, BC Ferries, and many, many others. And last but not least, I want to thank and acknowledge the Blue Whale team, starting first and foremost with Mike DeRoos and Michi Main, uh, Jesse McBeth, Bob and Brenda DeRoos, and over 100 other people who worked with us to make what you see today possible. So to all of you, I say thank you. Now I'd like to invite some key individuals who made this day possible to join us up here on stage to help us unveil a plaque before it blows over, dedicated to the Blue Whale Project team. First, Mike DeRoos, the UBC Blue Whale Skeleton Articulator, who spent more than a year working to prepare this report. Mike will be joined by Nietzsche Mann, who served as manager for this project. We're very appreciative of the entire team's hard work. We're piecing together this incredibly intricate and very large puzzle. I'd also like to invite Dr. Dost and Sandra Keogh, our guests from Prince Edward Island, up to the stage to start the event. These are just two of the many people who helped us in Prince Edward Island, on the ground, with logistics, and helping digging it out of the ground. So, let's see, who else? Uh, Wayne, Andrew, let's have you come back up here. So let's see if I can get this logistics. You two want to do that? And Thank you. 